<coughs> so we'll now be continuing with the solved examples on the topic of uh, rational functions of x. So the next problem says you need to solve this inequality. So solve for x and the inequality reads as follows x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. So the modulus of this should be less than 1 or the absolute value of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 should be less than 1. So because the absolute value is less than 1, that means that the argument can lie between minus 1 and 1. So minus 1 less than x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 is less than 1. So now there is an important thing which you need to remember for inequalities. That is, if you multiply both sides of an inequality by a positive number, then the sign of the inequality does not change. However, if you were to multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then the sign of the inequality would change and therefore you need to be careful. For example, here our desire is to multiply both sides of this inequality by x squared plus x plus 1. But if by chance that number is, that quantity is negative, then we would also have to take into account the change in sign which accompanies multiplying an inequality by a negative number. In our case, here uh, x squared plus x plus 1 is always positive. Why? Because you can see that the coefficient of x squared is 1 which is positive and the discriminant, so let us write it here, so x squared plus x plus 1, so the discriminant of this equation is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 which is minus 3 is less than 0 and a is 1 is greater than 0 so which implies x squared plus x plus 1 is greater than 0 for all values of x on the real number line. So because this quantity is always positive, we can multiply both sides of this inequality by this uh, number and not be worried about any changes in sign in the inequality. So let's do that. Let's multiply both sides of the equation. So minus x squared plus x plus 1 would be less than x squared minus 1, which again would be less than x squared plus x plus 1. So now let us focus on this inequality and this inequality separately. So let us call this inequality the A inequality and this one as the B inequality. So the A inequality reads as minus x squared minus x minus 1 is less than x squared minus 1. So the minus 1 cancels on both sides and you are left with 2x squared. So you bring the x squared to the other side. So 2x squared plus x is greater than 0. So this means that 2 times x, x plus half is greater than 0. So this, the left side is a quadratic polynomial and if you were to plot this because it has two roots, it would intersect the x-axis at two points and it is facing upwards or opening upwards because the coefficient of x is x squared is positive. So the first root is minus half, the second root is 0. So for this quantity to be greater than 0, just by looking at it, we can see that x belongs to the set, to the set of real numbers lying between minus infinity to minus half union 0 to infinity. So this is the solution to inequality A. We also have inequality B. So inequality B reads as x squared minus 1 is less than x squared plus x plus 1. So this is this part of the inequality and now you see that x squared actually disappears from both sides. You can subtract any number from both sides of the inequality without changing the sign of the inequality. And this means that x plus 2 should be greater than 0. I'm just taking the minus 1 to the other side. So x plus 2 should be greater than 0, which means that x has to be greater than minus 2. So this is the solution from inequality B and this was the solution from inequality A. So now we must be careful. We want both inequalities A and B to be satisfied simultaneously because this inequality means the 
absolute value means that the quantity here x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 this should be simultaneously it should be greater than minus 1 and it should also be less than plus 1. So because we want both of these to be satisfied these two inequalities must be combined together using the AND operator. So instead of the union operator which we are doing here we need to do an intersection. So x has to be greater than minus 2 as well as x has to lie between uh, minus infinity to minus half union 0 to infinity. So you can draw this as follows. So the A inequality can be represented on the number line as follows. So the A inequality is like this. So you start at minus infinity, you go to minus half. So this is an empty circle and then you can shade this part of the number line thick because you want to include all this and this is an empty circle and then you start again at 0 and you go again to infinity and this is again thick. This part is not thick because we are, we are not including that in here and for the inequality B it should always be greater than minus 2. So you have the number line here and say minus 2 is somewhere here. So you can include all of these numbers. So now let us look at the intersection of these two. So now you cannot take anything which is less than minus 2 and of course though B says that anything greater than minus 2 can be taken but you have the constraint from inequality 1. So if combining A and B you get that x belongs to the set of real numbers starting from minus 2 to minus half union 0 to infinity. So these are the values of x which satisfy the inequality above. We will now do another sort of example to further learn about the rational functions. So the ne next example reads as follows. Given g of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 over 4x minus m can take all real values. And of course, x is not equal to m over 4 because if x equals m over 4 then the denominator is 0 and you, you won't have a well defined uh, rational function then you need to find the values of m. Find the possible values of m. So again let y be the rational function under consideration y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 over 4x minus m where x is not equals m over 4. If we cross multiply then we have 4xy minus my equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 and then 2x squared minus 4y plus 5 times x plus 3 plus my should be equal to 0. 2x squared minus yeah and then we know that because x is real so it can take all real values and we have been told that x is real so I should have mentioned here that x belongs to the set of real numbers but it cannot be m over 4. So since x is real minus the number m over 4 we can say that the discriminant of this equation should be greater than or equal to 0 because x is a solution to this quadratic equation. So since x belongs to the set of real numbers except for m over 4 and uh, the roots of x is the root of this quadratic equation 
Therefore, the discriminant of this quadratic equation here should be positive. So this means that minus 4y plus 5 whole squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 plus my should be greater than or equal to 0. So this means that 16y squared plus 40y plus 25 minus 24 minus 8my should be greater than or equal to 0. So this means that 16y squared plus 40 minus 8m times y plus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. So by solving we have reached a point where we have an inequality in y and we know that y is real here. So all the input to this uh, quadratic inequation y is always positive and the coefficient of y here, so coefficient of y squared is 16 which is positive. Therefore, if we want this quantity to be always positive for all values of y belong to the real number line, we must have that the discriminant is less than or equal to 0. So the discriminant is less than or equal to 0. Therefore, b squared, so 40 minus 8m whole squared minus 4 times 16 times 1 should be less than or equal to 0. So this means that 5 minus m whole squared minus 8 less than or equal to 0 or m minus 4 times m minus 6 should be less than or equal to 0. So now this left hand side represents a quadratic polynomial which corresponds to an upward facing parabola because the coefficient of m squared is positive. So it will look something like this and this is the m axis. So m equals 4 is one of the roots and m equals 6 is one of the roots and we desire that m minus 4 times m minus 6 should be less than or equal to 0. So looking at this plot here we realize that that can only be possible when m lies between the numbers 4 and 6 or 4 less than equals m less than equals 6. So if we want that gx is 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 over 4x minus m and we want that gx can take all real values then m should lie between 4 to 6 including the two uh, numbers 4 and 